It's time for Tennessee's newest commitment as the Vols pick up a huge monster offensive lineman, Noah, pass rushing edge rusher, an incredible safety, another great quarterback. No, it's another tight end. So this wasn't the most exciting pickup for most Tennessee fans over the weekend. It might have flown under the radar for you. But he is committed to Tennessee. He announced on his Twitter page, uh, the Vols get some good news on Sunday morning, picking up a commitment from the 2025 uh, tight end four-star prospect, Jack Von Dorslayer. Dorslayer? He kills Dorslayer. Dorslayer. Dorselier, that too, uh, announced he was choosing Tennessee. Now, it's over Arkansas, Baylor, Texas, Texas A&M, LSU, and Georgia, and Alabama. So this is a guy who is an anywhere guy, and I break him down by anywhere, somewhere, nowhere. In other words, you could call up a coach at any school. You could go to any school. You could call up a coach at a school, and someone say yes, someone say no. That's a somewhere kid. A nowhere kid is it's Division II time. Call Chattanooga. So I'm going, this is an anywhere kid. So I think the fact that Tennessee fans aren't excited is that he's not an immediate impact guy. Everybody wants to load up for 2024, but Josh Eyeball, let's not be short-sighted. I do think he wants to be at Tennessee for the long term, and I do think he will be. So this is a guy who could become a superstar in not 2024, but 2026. So this is a big pickup. Um, it's just a long-term pickup. It's like reading a novel instead of an, a short story. I mean, this this takes a little bit longer, but also with his rating, who's to say he can't come in in 2025 and be some sort of an impact player, uh, at, at the very least a, uh, a second tight end that could get on the field some. I'm not ruling that out as a freshman considering the Vols ask their guys to be more athletes than they do push people around. Uh, so I think he's a pretty significant pickup. I want to get your thoughts, Caleb. And it's brought to you by Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn. Enjoy life better when you see better. Local vision done absolutely perfect. Uh, look at me. No contacts, no glasses, LASIK contact surgery, and regular eye examination, cctis.com, Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn. So what do you think of, of this pickup in my breakdown? I, I totally agree with you. And I think one of the things people are underrating is I I'm gonna say up front, here's a big part of it because people are asking, can he block? Well, I'm gonna tell you guys this. He's a four star pretty much um across the board, four star tight end, six five, two thirty. Uh that's a pretty good size going into your senior year in high school. We can agree with that, right, Dave? Because oh, you yeah. would assume that'll get to two fifty when he gets to college. Oh yeah. And yeah, and so I'm gonna tell you guys up front. I usually don't, and, and and a lot of recruits will come at me for this, a few from Nashville. I don't put a lot of stock in a uh, tape when I look at recruits a lot of times because they're just showing their highlight plays and they're not showing all the plays they messed up. And so, you know, you go to HUDL or any of these recruiting sites and it's just, they're showing everything that makes them look good. So I, I don't put that much stock in tape. However, what stood out to me about this kid, I looked up his tape last night, half of his highlights are him run blocking. Now, so his his selling point is being able to block. I think that's a big reason they picked him up because Ethan Davis is already going to be their athlete at receiver. You know that, Dave. Like He's going to be their Princeton fan next year, but just on an even more extreme level, probably. So they needed another run blocker because they... I think they're looking at transfers. They got Holden Stays coming in from Notre Dame, but we don't know what they're going to look like in 2025 and beyond. So this is a big pickup on that front. Now, on the other side, to play devil's advocate, because I, I'm not one who praises every pickup or criticizes every pickup, kid does come from the Dallas area. Kid does from come from South Lake Carroll. That is an area where Tennessee has missed every time they've looked, as you've ac accurately pointed out, Dave. Every time they've tried to bring a kid in from the Dallas or Houston area, it's failed miserably in yes. Tennessee history. Texas and in general has, but yes, certainly. Yes, exactly. Texas in general has been a failure for Tennessee overall. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that their recruits can consistently, particularly in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, where, they're, where Dallas-Fort Worth has, as you know, Dave, the biggest high schools, the, most, the best resources for high school football, the best high school coaching in America. I think it, I think a lot of players 
their skill sets are maximized in high school. So you don't see the growth you expect to see when they're in college a lot of times. So, so Caleb, let me let me ask you this and the message board this as well. Would you rather have a top flight guy in 2025 let's say okay would you I, i'm gonna make it really simple because sometimes my hypotheticals get a little too complicated would you rather have a four star for 2025 than a high three star for 2024 in other words a bit more of a project but a good project or a guy when i when i think four star i think there's a 50 50 chance he could come in and contribute right away which would you rather have at this point? Because in, in the development of this program, you're going to start having to think about guys clicking next year, not a transfer portal guy or a highly rated guy coming in from high school and contributing immediately. That's where you've got to get, right? Correct. Now, I would rather have a highly touted three-star if that three-star is a transfer portal guy That's that, that you're getting to contribute right away. Because I think everything about Tennessee football should be uh, invested in 2024. I, I think about, I, I'm thinking college football nowadays, Dave is it's borderline NFL. And I said this about the NFL for a long time. And I don't know if you agree with me on this, but I said, if you have a team that you could be a title contender for a, with, by making a few moves, you make those moves. You don't think about the future. The NFL is always win. Now you, you sacrifice the future for the now, if you can do it in the NFL. And I say that in the NBA too. If you're Danny Ainge and you can trade all your future away to get a ring with Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen, you do it. That's that's how sports works. I think college football is starting to reach that era. So I think because of the transfer portal. So I think if you can get a high three-star who is maybe a junior in the transfer portal as opposed to a recruit and you can plug him in at a spot, I think you take him because you got to go all in for win now. Well, but, I, wasn't, I wasn't even really going the transfer portal route. I was talking about high school kids. So high school kid, uh, I think 2025 is a no-brainer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My, my my yeah, my 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 question is this for you. The follow-up question is Tennessee beyond the and Daniel says no way I'd be taking projects in today's market. I agree with Daniel completely. Is Tennessee beyond taking projects or getting in on a guy early because they know they can't beat Alabama and Georgia right before signing day? Be sure and hit that like button, please, for me. Is Tennessee at that point? My answer is yes. I, I think there be. I, I think it's time to go toe to toe with the Georgias and the Alabamas of the world, and not say I've got to get on a guy early or I've got to offer him more nil money or do this. I think it's time that you're going toe to toe. I my, my answer is no, but not for the reason you think. I don't think Tennessee ever wants to be at that level. I mean, not that you don't want to be at that level. But I don't think Tennessee. I think projects can be more valuable. Look, I look in this era of college football with the transfer portal and players leaving all the time and NIL luring players elsewhere. There is going to be underrated value in having a bunch of guys that have been in the program for a while. And that's what projects are. You are reaching a level of you're reaching the college basketball level, Dave. Why do you think Kentucky only has one national championship? Because no matter how talented they are, the one and dones in the NCAA tournament are not going to beat a team that's got guys that have played together for four years that know each other. I think in an era of the transfer portal in college football, you're about to see the same situation where chemistry is going to be a big deal. Let's be honest. Let's talk about 2022 for Tennessee real quick, Dave. Yes, there was talent. Yes, Josh, I bought a great system. How much did they benefit though, that a lot of those guys had played together for already two years in an era of a trans in the era of the transfer portal. Certainly helped a lot. Helped a lot. Projects are going to be guys that, are very familiar with the system. Familiarity is going to be an underrated aspect of college football in the future. And it never was before, because let's be honest, when you got a number one recruiting class back in the day in college football, there was going to be familiarity. They were stuck with your program for three years, period. So it didn't really matter. Uh, but now in the era of the transfer portal and NIL, I think targeting familiarity is as much of an art as it is in college basketball now. And that's, that that's an underrated deal. So I'm taking the project at this point. Three years right. ago, I would agree with you. Okay, good stuff.